So I thought I'd show you my uh, 3G alternator conversion. And I tried doing a 3G alternator conversion before on this Bronco in the past, but uh, 3G alternators don't really work well with V-belts. But in one of my other videos, you'll see that I have a... Um, I'm doing a serpentine conversion too as well, so that's part of a, I'm, I'm kind of doing it at the same time, but uh, I've already gotten the alternators, and so, yeah, in like this video after this, you'll see me at the junkyard, and me, me uh, trying to find the uh, right alternator, so, but yeah, there's a couple different issues I had to deal with, you know, but I, what's funny is I already have a 3G alternator already wired up, so, but the brackets weren't, you know, one was a 7 inch spacing, the other one was an 8.25 inch spacing, the ear spacing between them where they connect. So, yeah, yeah, like I said, a V belt just is not powerful enough. It, it doesn't put enough tension on here to Give grip a, a 130. Sorry, my kids here. Give me a hug. Okay, okay. A 130 amp uh, alternator can't grip a V belt. I tried before, it just doesn't work no matter what. So that's why I had to go back to 2G. But. Uh, originally Broncos had a 1G and then I went to 2G but I, w I went from 1G to 3G and then back to 2G because 3G was too much so but uh, alright cool so yeah get that going and see what's up got the Anaheim pick apart I got that uh, crazy puddle right there but yeah and then they uh, searching for a 3G alternator with the 8.25 spacing and I'm trying to figure out it should be on like a older um, like the 90s I think Taurus so this is part of like my 3G conversion video slash serpentine so yeah I gotta find a Taurus here with an, I'll show you what I mean by the uh, 8.25 spacing all right guys so in my quest for this uh, finding this alternator here uh, see if I can grab this and the time I need to find an alternator with a uh, this is seven in the spacing this is like your standard 3g what I need to find is one with an 8.25 uh, because like the uh, 2g alternators from the trucks like the 351 and the 5 liter actually have an 8.25 spacing so they do actually come on the, on the 3.8 liters tar so that's what I'm looking for right now I'm actually looking for 130 amper not the 95 amper so I'm also going to take the horns too, once I find one, but I've already found a couple already, but they're kind of dirty, but so I'm trying to find this a little bit cleaner. Okay. Alright, so this is probably the best I could find. This is, uh, as you can see, it's a 8.25 ear space 3G. Yeah, it's definitely not very clean, so, um, you know, every time you buy a used all night, you're taking a risk here, but... These are pretty much about 250 bucks brand new, but I'm gonna try to get as much of this cable as, well as possible. The alternator cable, because the battery's over there, so I'm sure it feeds over here. But yeah, take a look at it. It's uh, some kind of, I think, 90s Taurus. But <clears throat> yeah, they also came in the, in the minivans, but it's the 3.8 liter, so if you're doing like the serpentine conversion with the, uh, you know, from a 2G alternator on a truck, it has this wider spacing, so. So, get this thing off here, and then uh, that's the big thing about it. So, get as much of this wiring harness as possible. Make sure that's in there good. It's not, not too fucked up, I guess. Okay, it's not broken, it looks like. Okay. Alright. Alright, All right, guys, there it is. Got it off. Uh, pretty dirty. But I'll, I'll clean it up on a paint, anyways. Maybe powder coat it, we'll see. So I wanted to get as much of this uh, cable as possible. It looks like that's where it feeds right there, that big thick piece right there. All right, cool. At least I gotta run that to my mega fuse, but. All right. So now I'm at a minivan, I saw this. Same spacing, but this one actually has a smaller pulley. So I'm trying to figure out the difference. This one's a smaller pulley and it has a number four. This one has number three on it, so I'm trying to figure out, trying to Google that real quick and see if I can figure out what the difference is. But uh, smaller pull usually means it's going to move faster, so that's uh, typically what I would want. All right. 
All right, so it's either four and number three. Yeah, so what I'm doing is, yeah, this one obviously, uh, this powers dual fans too, so I'm assuming this is probably even the more powerful one. Uh, then look at the pulley, the pulley is a different size. So look at that. So it's three, smaller pulley, so. Yeah, the smaller the pulley, the faster it's gonna turn, so. I'm gonna try to figure it out. All right, guys, got both those alternators. Um, kind of getting dark here, but what I have, I can't. I don't. I still don't know the difference between these two. I mean, they both look exactly the same, except for one has a bigger pulley, and there's the three and the four marked. But they're got them both cleaned, and uh, for the both of them, I got them for uh, 48 bucks. So not too bad. I mean, considering these things are 250 bucks brand new. So next thing I'm gonna do is clean these off. I'm gonna paint them black to match my engine and then I'll do the wiring, but the wiring is totally basic and I'll show you the next step. I've I've done a, I've done another 3G conversion before and I'll, I'll show you my wiring for that one. Um, but yeah, one of the issues with, uh, I had a 3G on there before and it was 130 amper and the problem was it wouldn't catch a, v, a normal V-belt, like a single V-belt, it wouldn't catch and it would just like whine and, and, and so I had to go back to a 2G because that was the only alternator that wouldn't actually, uh, the belt wouldn't slip. So I think originally I'd wanted to do a serpentine conversion for a long time. And in my other video, I show you that, what I'm doing. So, but, uh, yeah, I'm doing the serpentine conversion on my Bronco. But, so in the, in this part of doing the serpentine conversion, I wanted to get this better alternator, 130 amp alternator. So, um, all right. So the next thing will be the uh, wiring and I'll probably do that tomorrow when I have more light. And, uh, but cool, 48 bucks for two. So I have a backup now. So, well, at least that or one of these doesn't work. So at least it's less than a 50 50 chance now. So that they actually, they're both bad. So, but, uh, cool. Got these things painted. Those are the two alternators. And, like I said, 48 bucks at the pickup art. And, so now I have two every day. Well, I mean, I don't know what, what the, the pulleys are two different sizes. So, Still haven't figured that out yet, and there's different markings on them, four and three, but. All right, so let those things dry, and then I will get to the wiring part of it. Uh, but that's pretty basic. Then I'll, I'll show you my other, I, I've done a 3G before in the past, so it's already wired up, and I can show you that one, how I wired it up, and it worked perfectly, so. All right, cool. Bra's getting kind of messy here, but uh, back with a 3G alternator conversion. And what you see in front of you is my 2G alternator that I took off and the wine. And <clears throat> there it is. And this is my original 3G conversion I had <clears throat> that wouldn't grip the three uh, grip the V-belt. So and these are the two alternators I got at the junkyard. You know, the uh, these are 130 ampers and the large 8.25 spacing. And let me show you the wiring. This is actually like one of the simplest alternators you can set up. So um, I'm actually going to take my clip off to go to my mega fuse, but you'll see that in a couple seconds, my little bracket. So on the 2G alternator, you had two positive wires that fed into the mega fuse. 3G, you just have one thick wire. Uh, so there, there's three wires coming out of this little module harness here. And this one I have flipped over it just goes to a constant positive right here and so it just goes right over if you can see that and it goes right in to where the terminal goes and then this little bracket right here the center the center wire on the S port here you can see that goes back into this little clip back here I'm actually taking this off and move it to the new alternator so this is just my original thing and this long wire here this goes to key switch and I'll show you that hooked up here in a couple seconds, but it's uh, yeah. The interesting thing about an alternator is uh, versus a generator is that an alternator requires a field or requires power to start generating electricity, whereas a DC generator can just start you start, you spin it and it generates electricity. So I don't know the, all the deals, details behind it, but I know the uh, alternators are supposed to be more efficient. So that's why they're running cars. But back in the day, they used to run uh, generators in cars. So not sure what year they changed over, but. All right, so I'm gonna get these. Uh, I'm actually gonna use a small pulley. Cause remember, I had, I had two: one with the larger pulley and one with the uh, small pulley. So I'm gonna be putting the small pulley one in there because, if 
from my experience with superchargers, um, the smaller the pulley, the faster it spins. So, and I guess they call it, like in alternator terms, they call it underdrive or overdrive. So, okay, so we'll get this going. I'll put it in the vehicle and I'll wire it up and I'll show you how basic this really is. Air installed. Uh, if you saw my previous videos, um, I'm doing a super team conversion at the same time. So that's the reason why I'm doing the 3G, but it's as simple as this. Got the main power wire and uh, key switch coming this way. And it separates and it goes into this little mega fuse right here. And by the way, that's actually a, I get, uh, it's made by Blu-ray. It's actually for a boat. It's a, probably like 10 or 20 bucks for the mega fuse holder. And uh, I got it West Marine. And then off here is a little key switch going into my uh, key switch on the, uh, uh, what's it called, main sole line here. All right, so that's it. Basically just two wires, key switch and power, and that's it. And yeah, pretty basic. So this is 130 amps. That's a huge step up from the uh, 2G. But yeah, now that I actually go into a serpentine, I'm gonna be able to grip it. So, all right, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, once I get the uh, serpentine going, I'll uh, show you the voltage. Hopefully it works, I haven't tested it yet, so we'll see. All right guys, have the 3G installed, and I'm gonna do a quick fire up, and I'll show you this thing, and uh, charging, cool. Okay, it's kind of warming up right now, so it's raining right now, so you can see the rain coming down. But really, I just wanted to quickly show you the, uh, this thing's working, it's charging. Hopefully this will focus in, right there. And 14.6 volts. So I know if it was, um, you know, in the 12 volt area, then I wouldn't be working, but the fact that I'm getting 14 volts means it's, it's working, so that's it. So you can see how simple that was. It was just a couple wires and that was it. Cool.